So my name is Hille Perl and I play the viola da gamba on this recording. And the viola da gamba in this recording has the function to um, show the bass line mostly and also be a partner of the uh, recorder and also of the concertato cembalo of the harpsichord. And this instrument specifically that I'm using for this recording is an instrument made by Matthias Alban in the year 1686. So it's almost the same age as Johann Sebastian Bach would have been. So I think it's in a way perfect for this recording. We know also that in the Köthen Orchestra that Bach directed for a while, we had instruments by Matthias Alban as well as later on in the Leipzig Orchestra. So in a way, I'm really lucky to have a typically a Bach instrument also from Bach's time. Um, the viola da gamba instruments in general are very manifold. They come in all sizes, in different epochs, in different parts of uh, Europe. They, um, originally they came like all bowed instruments from the Arabic world in the 12th century and then uh, were developed in Spain in the 14th century they invented something like the vihuela da mano. So you can see um, the vihuela da mano was sort of like the guitar uh, played with the fingers or um, vihuela da pendula was played with a pick and vihuela d'arco was played with a bow. And that's what uh, the viola da gamba developed from. But you can see it's very related to lute or guitar instruments because it has six or seven strings and um, it's tuned in fourths with a third in the middle. And of course the main feature is that it has frets. And the frets have um, the function to make every note as resonant as possible so that every note can sound like an open string. That is sort of the, the idea of the um, of the method of using frets. What's very nice about playing an old instrument is that we have different features that modern builders would never use. Like you can see here, there is a, a branch in the wood or here this flame in the top wood, which is uh, a modern uh, viola da gamba maker or cello builder would never use that kind of wood. There's another little, uh, tiny little uh, irregularity in the wood here. But apparently they had some feeling for the wood, especially for the tops of the instruments that, um, ha that have different criteria. We don't know exactly why these instruments are so good. Is it just because they're so old or is it in fact so that the ancient builders had um, other ways of thinking about the wood? And that's why I'm extremely happy to uh, play this ancient instrument. It also feels like, because it's so old and because I know it will get much older than I will ever be, it has so many different features of people that have played it before. To play an old instrument always means that you get something more than what you do yourself. And I think that's a very interesting aspect of playing, especially a string instrument, is that they carry the wisdom of the people before you. The frets, yeah, the frets are good. And also the lion's head is a very good feature of this viola da gamba. It is in fact the original head and also the original pegs, which is very rare that we uh, have that in uh, viola da gambas. Because the viola da gamba was out of fashion for a while in the, especially in the 19th century, a lot of the really good instruments were uh, built into cellos and the ones that were not so good, they were just thrown away. In a way, it's a it's total magic accident that this instrument survived comparatively unchanged because it was in a monastery in Tyrol 
and was lying on an attic for probably about 150 years um, until it was rediscovered in the year 1952. And then in magic ways it found its way to me. And I hope that it will sound on long after I'm gone.